Today's story is about Lucia de Burke. Lucia was functioning as a pediatric medical caretaker at the Juliana Children's Hospital in The Hague, Netherlands, when an examination concerning dubious passings during emergency clinic confirmations was embraced. On September 4, 2001, a child passed on out of nowhere while in the emergency clinic, and this set off an examination concerning any unforeseen passings or revival endeavors. It was found that there had been nine occurrences between September 2000 and September 2001, which initially were believed to be normal passings yet on additional investigation of the records seemed, by all accounts, to be exceptionally dubious. One medical attendant had been on the job on the event of every one of these passings Lucia. At that point, she was answerable for giving medicine and dealing with the consideration of every patient. To the emergency clinic, it appeared an over-the-top occurrence that she had been dealing with every one of these nine patients before they abruptly kicked the bucket and they continued to squeeze charges against Lucia. The charges against Lucia involved cases from three clinics in the Quick region, all of which a dubious passings happen while she was working and present. She was brought to preliminary in March 2003 and was just accused of the passings and endeavored passings that the clinical specialists finished up had no regular causes. At times the patients had been saved via cardiopulmonary revival, however Lucia was as yet accused of endeavored murder in these cases. It was claimed that she had once filled in as a whore while living in Canada and furthermore in the Netherlands before she turned into a medical caretaker. However, what truly fixed the destiny of Lucia was the legal executive depending on measurable reports that showed that the likelihood of a medical caretaker being on the job during every episode was 1 out of 342 million. With such amazing chances, the preliminary just endured five days, and toward the end Lucia was seen as at fault for the killings and endeavored murders on March 24, 2003. The sentence she got was life detainment, and in the Netherlands, life implied life. This was dismissed, and the conviction was maintained. The case was then introduced to the Netherlands Supreme Court in March 2006, when forcing a mental detainment simultaneously as life imprisonment was considered erroneous. Only days after the Supreme Court had made its decision, Lucia experienced a stroke and was confessed to the jail clinic. On July 13, 2006, the Court of Appeal maintained the underlying decision and conviction, and the lifelong incarceration was given by and by. This time notwithstanding, the mental confinement was excused. For Lucia, that implied that, since she was viewed as at legitimate fault for two of the killings, the court framework in this manner finished up she should be at fault for the others. The two killings that were probably demonstrated depended on the way that the clinical specialists couldn't find the passings were brought about by There was even proof tossed out by the arraignment that demonstrated Lucia was not in that frame of mind with one of the patients when they kicked the bucket. At first Lucia had been accused of 13 counts of homicide and health-related crises, however the guard had the option to demonstrate that Lucia had not been available in a considerable lot of these cases. Indeed, even the last case was at first put down as a characteristic demise until it was proposed that one medical caretaker, Lucia, had been with every patient that had kicked the bucket. It was subsequently resolved that the figure was more like 1 out of 25, that a medical caretaker would be available during a spate of clinic passings. Be that as it may, Tom Dirksen and Meta Danu presented their exploration to the Posthumous II Commission, which checks out at specific shut cases and checks for mistakes by the police and any misconception of logical and clinical proof. Dirksen announced that clinical specialists had not been given all of the important data when examined regarding the chance of regular makes driving the passings. The commission consented to take a gander at the case and doled out three men from their gathering to research whether there had been other unexplained passings when Lucia was absent, in the event that all pertinent data was given to the master observers and assuming logical information presently modified the inquiry in regards to Digoxin. The commission delivered their report in October 2007, suggesting that the case be returned because of the obvious limited focus of the examiners at the outset. Following quite a while of examination and hearings, the Allure hearing at long last reached a conclusion on March 17, 2010. However there have been many instances of honest individuals found liable and detained or even put to death in certain nations, the instance of Lucia de Burke was maybe one of the most terrible, on the grounds that there was never any proof that a wrongdoing had even been perpetrated. It is actually the case that Lucia got monetary pay for the unfair conviction and detainment, however the figure has never been unveiled. The entire legal cycle caused significant damage truly and intellectually on a lady who was finishing the work she cherished, dealing with others. 
To be blamed and indicted for such something horrendous, and to be marked an heavenly messenger of death probably been totally soul obliterating. Beside the impact on Lucia, the groups of the supposed casualties should likewise have felt this premature delivery of equity, for they, for were, they persuaded were persuaded to think, to think their, their friends, friends and family, and family had, been had been killed for quite a long time. They as well, as Lucia, were survivors of the legal framework. That's it, for this episode. See you soon, with another, true murder story.